Hey, it's Matt. I'm out here enjoying the good weather in Arizona, and I'm to tell you the three reasons why your demo didn't close. I get a lot of people messaging me saying, hey, I did a great software demo. It seemed like they kind of liked it, but they never signed up. Why is that? Well, I'm gonna tell you the three most popular reasons of why your software demo didn't close. Let's get it. Hey, it's Matt Wallach. I help software leaders understand how to generate a whole ton of great leads, close those deals so that you can get some quick revenue and a lot of revenue and build a sales team so that you can have other people doing it for you. If you want any of those things, subscribe to the channel right now, hit that button and the little bell. That way you'll be notified about all of my upcoming videos and trainings on how you can implement the right sales process so you can get more software customers. Now today we're talking about why your software demo didn't close. And this is something I get quite a bit. I get this a lot, why your software demo doesn't close. And it's really frustrating because sometimes you do a demo and you have people say, hey, that was nice, thank you. We don't want that was nice. We want, yes, I love it, I need it. How can I sign up? I need to get started right now. I wanna implement this right away. That's where we need to get to. People need emotion. And so the number one thing that we don't do well in our demos when they don't close is discovery. Surprisingly, a lot of people think that closing happens at the end, that we need to say some really cool, slick thing and it's gonna get them to just say, yeah, I need to have this. No, actually it happens in discovery way at the beginning. If you're doing discovery and people are not getting emotional about their problem, if they don't realize that this is a big issue, that they must have this, that they've got to solve their challenges, they've got to get over these pains, if they're not getting to a crazy level of feeling and emotion from their problems, they're not gonna wanna get away from them. You know, people move, they make changes because of problems. They're not going to make changes because it's just kinda maybe this will be nicer. So instead of focusing on your product, instead of focusing on what your thing does, first really focus on them. Really make sure that they understand just how bad things are, that they get that they're way behind, that they're needing to fix things quick. And once they get to that level of understanding, then that's when they start to realize if I need to fix this quick, what can do it? Oh, you're right there in front of me and you have a product? Great, let's do it. And that's when you can start to take action. So. The number one most important thing, make sure your discovery is great. Now, if your discovery is lacking, check out this video. This is where you can see my instructions on how to make an outstanding discovery. I'll help you understand exactly what you need to do. Go there, check that out now. That way, you know you won't be missing any good discovery stuff. Okay, by the way, if you like this stuff, hit like right now. That'll show me this is good. And if you have any questions or thoughts on other things that I might help you with, definitely throw that in the comments. I'll be able to answer those for you. The number two reason why people don't close, they're resistant to change, okay? We kind of touched on this in Discovery, how you've got to get them emotional, but really what we want to do in the second piece is we need to make sure that it's really obvious that they need to make this change. Because sometimes people even think it's a good thing, but if they see that there's an implementation that needs to happen, there's training that needs to happen, there's onboarding, all of that stuff is nasty, nasty, nasty. And so we need to make sure that they don't see it as very bad. So these first two things I've talked about relate to my monster analogy and my clients always laugh at me with my analogy but i think that they really help so my monster analogy is this let's say your buyer is traveling down the road they're going down the road of life and you've done a great job in the demo of convincing them that just down the path is the promised land that your product is going to make everything perfect and wonderful and you might have done a good job of convincing that however if they see a giant monster in the road, in the way of the product, the promised land, then they're not gonna wanna go through that monster. And that monster is the integration, the setup, the onboarding, the training, all the things that they need to do to get into the product. None of that sounds good. And they don't wanna actually go through that monster. But you'll also realize that at this point, we need to solve two things, I hope you realize. At this point, we need to solve two problems, not just this monster, but actually two problems. Number one, we need to make sure that this monster is a tiny little bunny rabbit in their head so that instead of, hey, this big scary monster, we can help them understand, oh, we've 
been able to set up an onboarding process or we have a great training team that's going to hold your hand the entire way and here's somebody else who's been able to solve this problem just fine and they're doing great let's get that monster to not look so scary not look so nasty make it a tiny little bunny rabbit so they can say yeah i can just hop right over that and we're good to go and number two Let's make the monster on their back something terrible, something nasty, something horrible. Make it a big, scary monster. What's that monster on their back? That is their current situation, their current product they're using, their current process that they're going through, whatever it is, make sure they get how bad it is, like we talked about in Discovery. That's where this happens. So if you can do this, make that monster really tiny that they have to get over to get to your product, your integration, your setup, all that process. Make it sound super smooth, super easy, and that you help people through it and that others have done it before. And make the monster on their back really nasty and bad. If you do both of those things, then they're going to really love you. So that's the monster analogy. Make sure you can do it. Those are two of them. And the third thing that kind of relates to this is... A lot of times what I see when people aren't closing, I watch the demo, people say, hey, Matt, can you check this out? And they, they hire me basically to look over their demos, give them feedback. Essentially what they're doing is they're being too salesy. They're being a salesperson. And I know that what you might be, you might be a salesperson. But really we want to be a consultant. We want to be an advisor. We want to help and not sell. And if we're helping, then they're going to feel that. They're going to feel that you're trying to help them. You're trying to improve their situation. Yeah, maybe your product is one of the ways they can do that. But if you're looking at it holistically and thinking how you can help them, how you can get them better, and the words that you're using are going to mimic that, are going to be showing of that, to explain that I'm here to help instead of I just want to sell you, then that's going to be very powerful to the buyer. The buyer is going to recognize that. They're going to sense that your motivations are in line with theirs, that your objective is to help them get better, just like theirs is. If they feel that alignment, they're going to want to follow you. They're going to want to make sure that you help them to get that monster off the back and to get over the big scary monster in front of you. So I hope that this helps. Make sure that they understand how bad their current situation is. Make sure that they get that it's not really that bad to get started with your product. It'll be really easy and that you're helping them and guiding them the entire way. If you can do all these things, you're going to close a lot more of those demos than you were before. Hey, I hope this helped. Again, make sure you're subscribed. That way you won't miss any of this stuff. And I will see you on the next one.